It's Sunday, November 20th, 2020. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I am going to start the first in a series of videos on repowering a displacement hull powerboat. Now this repowering series would apply also to a sailboat, but I'm using uh, powerboats as an example because 10 years ago when I was getting ready to repower my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga, I went through this entire process. And the process is a little bit involved. It's going to be several videos, and, uh, but I'm going to discuss everything I can about the process and hopefully make it clear to you just what is involved in repowering when you change the engine that's in the boat rather significantly by putting in a different amount of power. Okay, for the purposes of illustrating the process of picking an engine and uh, working out all the details associated with it, I'm going to use a hypothetical boat. Basically, the boat I'm going to use has about a 36 and a half foot water line and say a 22,500 pound displacement. An example of a boat that might be like that is uh, a boat that belongs to a fellow YouTuber named Peter Knowles. His boat is named Jordy, and he is actually in the process of repowering it. His boat is a 38-foot monk. So my hypothetical boat is basically about what his boat would look like. So I'm going to use this series of videos to illustrate what's involved in picking an engine to go into a boat like that boat. So, what's the first constraint? How much power do we need? How big an engine do we need to put in? Well, that is a, a fairly important question, and it depends on how fast you want to go. To go faster in a powerboat requires more power. To a first approximation, the amount of power required depends on the displacement of the boat, how much the boat weighs, and the waterline length of the boat. So the heavier the boat is, the more power it takes to achieve a particular speed, and the longer the waterline length is, the less power it takes to achieve a particular speed, assuming the displacement is the same. So we're going to look at how power depends on these factors. Now we also need to decide how fast we're going to go. And for a displacement hull power boat, that is a boat which for all intents and purposes cannot get up on plane. There is a sort of rule of thumb called the hull speed. And hull speed is very simple. It's based on the idea uh, that when a powerboat moves, it creates a wave, the bow wave. And as you go faster, the wavelength of the bow, of the bow wave increases. And basically, when the wavelength of the bow wave is equal to the length of the boat, the boat takes a lot of power to go incrementally faster. The boat speed at which the wavelength of the bow wave is equal to the waterline length of the boat is called hull speed. So that is a kind of a, a soft limit on how fast you can go. And for my hypothetical boat with a 36 and a half foot waterline, hull speed is given by a simple expression which is hull speed in knots is 1.34 times the square root of the waterline length of the boat in feet. So for my hypothetical 36 and a half foot waterline boat, the hull speed works out to about 8.1 knots. So this boat uh, can achieve about 8.1 knots without putting a huge engine in it. But if we want to go faster than 8.1 knots, we're going to have to put bigger and bigger engines in depending on how much faster we want to go. So that kind of sets 
if you will, a soft upper limit to boat speed. And if it's a pure displacement hull of that size, you might be happiest cruising a little bit slower than hull speed. Say, oh, six knots or six and a half knots instead of 8.1 knots. And we're going to take a look now at how power required is related to the displacement of the boat, how much it weighs, how much water it ha you have to push out of the way when you move the boat, and the waterline length. There are a number of formulas out there uh, that have been developed by naval architects to give an approximation of the amount of power required for a displacement hull boat to travel at speeds up to a little bit more than the hull speed. One of them is a formula published in the magazine Professional Boat Builder by a naval architect named Wyman. Another formula is uh, a formula published by a naval architect uh, by the name of Dave Gare. So we're going to take a look at those two formulas. I'm going to use my hypothetical boat's waterline length and displacement to calculate the amount of power that's required to go at different speeds using the Wyman formula and the Gare formula. So let's take a look at those numbers now. This graph shows the results of plugging the displacement and waterline of my hypothetical boat into the two power formulas. The blue line is the result using the Wyman formula and the red line is the result using the Gare formula. The Gare formula, the red line, really illustrates the impact of going faster than hull speed. Now if we look there at about 8 knots, the Gare formula suggests that it takes about 50 horsepower to achieve 8 knots for our hypothetical boat. But if we want to go up to 9 knots, the required power jumps up to 80 horsepower. That's a 60% increase. And if we want to go from 9 to 10 knots, it jumps up to almost 160 horsepower, or another 100% increase. Now that, that effect is not as pronounced in the Wyman formula, but it's still there. The concave up nature of the blue line illustrates that the amount of power to go each additional knot above hull speed is getting bigger. These uh, power formulas are useful to estimate how much power you're going to need up to about hull speed. Above hull speed, you can see the two formulas diverge quite a bit and you'd have to decide which one you want to use and that, you know, just at this point if you don't know anything else about the formulas, it would just be flipping a coin and you might get the wrong one and you wouldn't want to spend a lot of extra money buying a bigger engine in the hope of going 10 knots and find out that you needed to have 50 horsepower more than you bought. So these formulas have their limits, but they're okay for a first approximation of how much power it's going to take to move the boat through the water at a speed up to about hull speed. And you'll notice that below the point where the two formulas cross, which is coincidentally just about hull speed, um, that they're fairly close together, but they are still different. And the difference in down there is about you know five to six horsepower. For example, at six knots, the Wyman formula suggests that you need about 24 horsepower and the Gare formula suggests that you need about 18 horsepower. That's six horsepower difference. And that at that horsepower output is fairly significant. And if you were trying to use one of these formulas to, uh, for example, pitch your prop, uh, you might end up with a fairly significant error. Now while these two formulas don't agree perfectly, and particularly at higher speeds, of, above the hull speed, where they actually diverge quite dramatically, they do agree well enough up to hull speed mm -hmm. to allow us uh, to pick an engine horsepower if we don't really need to go much above hull speed. 
Both formulas predict that we need about 50 horsepower to achieve hull speed. So, if we want to go hull speed or less, we can get away with an engine that produces, say, 55 to 60 horsepower to give us a little cushion. But if we want to do the next step, which is fitting a propeller and getting the right diameter, blade count, and pitch on the propeller to uh, operate optimally through the entire uh, RPM range of the engine, we need a better estimate of power required to move the boat. Fortunately, there are better approaches out there. And those approaches take into account additional hull parameters. These first two formulas, which as I said are good for a first approximation, only include displacement and waterline length. But that doesn't really tell us much about the shape of the hull. And the, the approach that I'm going to be talking about in my next video takes into account a number of other hull form parameters. And from my experience in using that approach on my boat, Tortuga, I know that it works quite well at predicting the power required to move a displacement hull powerboat through the water. So, tune in to my next video to where I will talk about a more detailed approach to calculating the power required to move a displacement hull powerboat. Okay, uh, I have put a link to a reference that has both of the formulas I talked about uh, here today in it and uh, has a bunch of additional discussion of uh, determining power requirements for power boats. You might find it quite interesting to read. And I hope that this little presentation is a good lead in to that. Anyway, the next video is going to look at a much more detailed approach to calculating the power requirements of a powerboat and that will produce a precise enough result that we can use it for prop sizing. And uh, that is very expensive because you do not want to be doing a sort of trial and error method with propellers and putting one prop on, discovering it doesn't work, taking it off, re-pitching it, or replacing it all together because that costs money, and quite a bit of money, and you really don't want to do that any more than you absolutely have to. So having a good model for the power requirements of your boat is necessary to getting the prop right the first time. Okay, thanks for watching. If you felt like you got something out of watching this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll find out when my next exciting video is posted. Thanks for watching.